Welcome back to another Vulnhub video. Uh, it's been a pretty long hiatus since my last video, um, but there's been a lot of new VMs put up on the website over the last few months, so I'm looking forward to getting back into making some videos and showing them up on this channel. Today we're going to dive straight into it. We've got a new VM called Node. As you can see here, it's already running inside VirtualBox. And I've also got my Kali machine running here, which I'm just going to go ahead and full screen. Okay, so first of all, we'll just have a quick check of what IP address we're running on on this attacking machine. So we are on 10.0.2.7 and I've got my ping sweep script here. I'll just double check that's looking at the same IP range, which it is. I'll go ahead and run that script in to see what IP address our vulnerable VM is in this case. And it's 10.0.2.5. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do a basic nmap scan uh, to have a look at what services might be running on our target system. Okay, so there we're doing a very robust scan of pretty much all the ports and we're also looking to do a bit of operating system detection as well. So I'll go ahead and start that running. You can see already there it's identified one service running on port 22 which is likely a SSH service. I'm just going to go and let that scan finish now. Depending on how aggressive your scan is or how many additional scripts is running, it can take quite a long time, but this should be probably done in about 30 seconds. And you can see it's found a second port there, uh, port 3000. So I'll definitely be digging into what service is running on that port. Okay, now it's going ahead and probing those two identified services a little bit more. And that's finished now. So if we have a quick scroll up, you can see it actually looks to be a HTTP web server running on port 3000. You can see references to a, a login area there and the title of the page my place and there's also a little bit of information about the type of operating system it might be running as well okay so let's just fire up the web browser and let's browse to that port 3000 on our target machine and see what we can see and we've got a welcome page to my place and there's some information on the newest members there so we might want to immediately write down Tom Mark and Rastating as possible usernames that we can use as part of our attack we've also got a login area we could potentially try some default credentials admin admin see if we get lucky um, no luck there so let's go ahead and um, we could do a, some kind of um, browsing of the available directories using something like um, Durbuster um, or we could start looking at the page source as well to see what other information we can find with a right click there so I'll have a look down here um, a few references to some JavaScript files at the bottom, which we can have a quick look at, just to see if anything jumps out at us. Um, possible partials directory, which we could browse to reference there. API users latest, it's another area I'm definitely going to check out. API admin backup, another area. 
and API users. So let's start with this one. And we could browse through each one of these directories to see if we find any other useful files for our task here. So I'm just going to modify the URL to be API slash users. And you can see we've basically landed on some JSON data. And luckily for us, we've got some information on possible user accounts to log in with here. So as, as we predicted, we see a Tom, a Mark, and a Restating. But we also see a MyPlace admin account, which definitely looks like an interesting one to us. And we've got passwords there, which look like they are um, hash values of passwords. So we'll need to do some hash cracking on those to see what the passwords might be. Okay, so to do that, let's go and bring up a online page which can help us crack those passwords. CrackStation is one which I normally like to use, but at the moment that appears to be down. But we can try this one here, MD5, cmd5.org. And we'll first try the admin. hash there and great we've got a potential password there Manchester for the admin account now let's have a look at the hash of the user account Tom if I can correctly paste it in let's try again Okay, so we've got a password for Tom there, SpongeBob. Now let's try the password hash of the user account Mark. Snowflake, so three out of three so far. We're having a lot of luck here. And then the final hash for the user account Rastating. Paste that in. Uh, okay, so we've got no hits for that one, but we do have three possible passwords for three of those accounts, which is really good for us. Uh, so what I might quickly do, I'll just try my luck before I try and log into that website, and just see if I can log in via SSH with any of those accounts. Asking for the password there, and the decrypted one we got was Manchester. Nope. So no luck there. Uh, now let's try uh, Tom's account. And the password for Tom was SpongeBob. And finally, let's try the password and account for Mark, which was Snowflake. No, so it's not, haven't made it too easy for us. Uh, just clear that down and here as well. So let's go back to that website and let's go back to the login area. And let's go ahead and log in with our suspected admin account. And the password was Manchester. Okay, so you can see we're now in the slash admin directory. It looks like we have successfully logged in and it's giving us the opportunity to download a backup of the website, which we'll definitely go ahead and do. So we'll download that backup, myplace.backup, and that's being saved into our downloads area. So let's go ahead 
and browse into our downloads area and you can see we now have our myplace.backup file there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a command called head to have a look at the file signature of this file, um, have a look at the first um, part of the file content, see if we can identify what type of file it might be. And that looks very much like base64 encoded content to me, especially this um, the, the combination of the characters and the finishing with an equal sign there. So we can actually do a base64 decode on the command line quite easy there. So if we just type in base64 decode, then the name of our file, and we're going to output that to let's say decoded backup dot text. Oh, not sure if I ran that properly or not. I think I did. Let's just make sure. Yes, yeah, so I've got a text file there with some content in, so it looks like it's worked okay. So now let's just use head again to have a look at the decoded file and see what the contents looks like this time. So certainly not text readable for us yet, but if we can see right at the start of the file, we've got this PK signature. So that PK signature tells us this is likely a zip file. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rename that again to zip. I'm gonna see if I can just use the unzip command to unzip that and it's asking us for a password what we do get is we get a file listing of everything it looks to basically be a backup of the website as we expected but we haven't got a password um, so what we could do now is actually try and use some kind of simple password cracker on the command line to um, see if we can get into this zip file so we can use one called um, fcrackzip. So here we go, fcrackzip. And we're going to specify um, the Rocky password list there. And also point it at our target file, which is our decoded backup zip. So let's go ahead and run that. And immediately, we are very luckily provided with the password. So the password was in that Rocky text file, which is included in Kali. And it says the password is magic word. So let's go ahead again and try and unzip our zipped up file. And I'm gonna type in magic word as the password this time. And okay. type there you go so we now have a var directory www.directory and so on into my place where we start to see the contents of the actual website files itself so at this point we could go through and we could start browsing these so Let's have a look at app.js. Um, we could pick any of these, but we're gonna go for app.js. So we'll just use cat to have a look at that. Full screen there. And we can see various JavaScript code here the app works and we've got a very nice graphic in text for us there um, but this bit looks very interesting to us so we've got um, mongodb running as part of this um, node server so we've got this database there and you can see there in this URL that we actually have what looks to be a user account and a password, so it's a different password for the user account mark that we already knew. 
So this is very interesting to me, and I definitely want to give this a go um, on my SSH service again to see if we get lucky with this password. So we'll do mark at 10.0.2.5. Password down. Okay, so it looks like we have been successful now in finding a password for the mark account on the SSH. I'll do a quick ID. You can see we are the user mark on the system node. And we're currently sitting in Mark's home directory. So if we go up a level and have a quick browse around, we can see a directory for Tom and also for Frank. So we could have a quick look in the Tom directory. And we can see a user.txt. So let's go ahead and see if that's our first flag. Okay, so it says permission denied. And we can see there it's actually um, got privileges, um, which mean that we as the user mark can't actually view the content of that file. So let's also have a look in Frank's folder. And mainly because I didn't remember, let's have a look in Tom's Oh, sorry. Let's go up a level. Uh, Frank, did we look in Frank's directory? We did. Did we look in Tom's? Mark was the one I wanted. particularly interesting in there either for the moment so the next thing we'll do is we'll see whether we have any privileges to run any elevated commands go ahead and pop our password in again so the user mark may not run sudo on node so we're not getting very far with that so what I might do now is actually see if I can start moving up some files and scripts that we can run on this system and find some other ways we might be able to elevate our privileges. So first of all, if we go back to our Kali system on the left, I'm just going to start my web server. So that's started now, this service Apache 2 start. And I'm just uh, on the target machine. I'm going to move myself into the temp directory, see what's currently in there. Not too much. And I'm going to see if I can use uh, wget on the system, which is there, which is good for us. So now let's use you get to pick up one of our scripts let's just double check what we've got in our directory okay so these are the files that I'm hosting on my web server for pickup I'm going to start with this lin enum.sh which is a, a script which runs uh, some uh, basic kind of reconnaissance of the host to see what we might be able to probe for elevating our privileges or anything we might be able to exploit. So let's go ahead and use wget to pull that file down. Yep, so there's our file now. I'm just going to open up the privileges on that file, meaning that I can do whatever I want with it. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually run that script. OK, 
Okay, I was actually meant to pipe that to That's better. Pipe that to a text file. Now take a couple of seconds to run. Okay, so we now have that out.text, which we can cut to look at the content. Let's have a quick browse down there, see if anything jumps out at us. So let's just start with the basics here. Let's have a look at what operating system and kernel version we're on. So we've got Linux kernel version 44093 generic. And we've also got Ubuntu as DOS 16.04.3, which is Xenial. So we could possibly try and find a kernel local exploit, which we can move up to the system for that. And let's see whether we've got any compilers on the system, which would allow us to compile one on the target. Yeah, so we've got GCC, you can see there, useful things installed some compiler libraries there okay so let's go ahead and just minimize this and we'll go out to exploit DB and see what exploits we can find which might be useful for us so we'll search the exploit database we'll look for any Ubuntu 16.04 uh, local exploits. We have Ubuntu in this list. Uh, no, let's just go for Linux. And do a search. Okay, so we've got 10 responses so the first one here local. So this third one looks like it could be um, a good option for us to try try our luck with it covers um, quite a number of different versions of the 4.4 Linux kernel and is also specifically for the version of Ubuntu that we're looking at as well. So let's have a quick look, quick look at this one. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead and download this local privilege escalation and save this C file. So what I might do now is I will move that. Um, let's go into our let's go into our downloads directory and let's move file that we just downloaded over to our web server directory there okay so you can see that file now sitting in there Well, there's no issues with that being picked up and privileges I'm just going to open up the permissions on that as well I'm going to go back to our target machine and use wget to pick that up ok 
Okay, so we've downloaded that now. And again, I'm just gonna open up the privileges on that. Okay, so now we're in a position to try and compile this. Um, so let's use GCC, which we know is on the uh, system. Yeah, looks like it's there. Um, we'll just call this uh, output file. Ouch. Check that's outputted. Yeah, that looks good. Just going to change the permissions again. We can use uh, numbers to change the permissions, or we can use letters like that if we want to open it like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and run that ouch binary and it says spawning root shell. Great, so we are now root, so that local privilege escalation worked great for us. Now if we go into the home directory, we should be able to and if we browse to the home directory of Tom, you should now be able to read that user.txt flag file, which you didn't have permissions to read before. And also, if we browse to the root directory, we should find a root flag text file there as well. Great, so we found both the flags there. Um, so that was a nice, easy VM challenge to get me started in these videos again. Um, there definitely would have been other ways to move from the user account mark to Tom, no doubt, by um, exploiting uh, vulnerabilities in the, the way the system was set up or the way that certain permissions were set up on operating system files. Um, we were fortunate enough to find quite a simple uh, local um, kernel exploit, which allowed us to raise our privileges straight to root. Uh, so that was quite good. Okay, thanks very much for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.